reasons why they built the pyramids. If you you know if you want to keep safe safekeeping for going into the next world, you put them in a pyramid. So it's the it's the single strongest structure. So whenever we put our body into pyramids, we're structurally sound. Yeah. Um, if you think about if you ever get we do this as a drill with the kids uh, in my class. We get them to stack all the balance balls into a pyramid, right? So even something like you know a bunch of balls, which are built to move, and you know they move around, right? If you want to stack them into a structure, you put them in a pyramid, right? And you can you'll see that in you know, fruit and veg sometimes where they do a little display of oranges and they put them in a pyramid, right? So the structure is really really strong. So we're going to get pyramids. Um, one of the things that's then associated with the pyramid shape is torque, right? So go and check this out in any uh, like biomechanic textbook. There's definitions of loads. Uh, essentially what we're, what we're wanting to do is for any input of energy, we're wanting to maximize the amount of output we're gonna get, okay? And so uh, torque, tensile forces, they're basically, they're gonna give you the best return. And that comes from their, from their structure. So. It's kind of pretty key. And so you, you get this study of these things. It used to be called tensegrity. It's how they, how they try and build structures. Obviously, we can't all build pyramids because we have to think about space, right? But a lot of the actual structures of buildings are built in with these pyramidic forms or they use pyramids in very little pyramids in very, you know, very small, and then they, they just multiply them up, right? So the pyramid's the key. And you'll, you'll hear that Hickson, um, refers to this in the book Breathe. Who's read Breathe here? Hickson's autobiography. So he talks about the pyramid, you know, classic Hickson. He doesn't tell you kind of everything, you have to ask him. But he talks about the pyramid always falls in base. And it's, I've kind of gone and studied this thing, so there's now this whole thing of biotensegrity. And you get textbooks on biotensegrity, you can study it in, in university courses. And it's basically trying to, try to take tensile strength and look at that, what that means when you apply it to, to human beings, right? So it's a, it's a kind of an interesting thing. And, and Matt was saying last night about, um, he was with Henry Aikens, one of Hickson's first black belts. And I had the same experience with Hickson where they asked you to move them. And I could not move Hickson at all. I mean, it's like he is, it's like he is screwed into the ground, but he doesn't really tell you what it is he's doing. And so you have to go and kind of try and figure out what's going on that makes him so immovable. And he's like, in every position I got to work with him, you just can't move him. He, he, he just, the guy doesn't move. You push him, you pull him, every position, he doesn't move. And Matt, Matt had the same sensation with Henry. So <clears throat> biotensegrity also means that a lot of the time, and go and have a study of this, um, in your own time. There's some good videos on YouTube. I think they are the sort of videos you should be watching on YouTube. Um, and essentially it also says that our apex of our pyramid often determines our base. So it's not just that, you know, I've tended to always think of like, and it's kind of true, our base determines everything else that goes upon it. But it also means that our head and shoulders particularly, if we want to get torque through our body, we want to glue our feet to the ground, we need to look at like mechanically where torque comes from. And it comes basically as two major places we have real body torque in our body. So one is in our neck, when we twist, you'll feel everything, if everyone just twists their neck, particularly if you've been rolling a lot, you'll feel your ribs, if you hold your shoulders tight, you'll feel your ribs start to become rigid, right? So it starts transmitting down your body. The other place is when you move your shoulders, and you can feel this as well, when you move your shoulders against your base. Okay, so this is a so this then creates all this tension. It's sort of like what Martin was referring to with the Valsalva. Right? You start to create tension. And then we start to get into this thing, and as I like, twisted this way, like uh, Casey was talking about putting weight into one bit. Right? Lots of ways you can do this and be basic. Well, I think you probably covered the main ones actually. But um, but yeah, just different ways you can put weight into them, right? And this is just it, what I'm doing right now. Now, I want even more weight, I start looking backwards, okay? So, 
think I've covered the main thing. So yeah, so this then is this thing of you, you screw yourself at the ground and you, it's almost like you can't be pushed or pulled, right? So we're just going to start with um, a quite a gentle drill because I know everyone's kind of, I'm feeling it anyway, even if you young ones are. Um, so I just use you, Lee. So we're just going to stand up. We're just going to stand in a 12 and 3 base like this to begin with. But we do this drill with the kids. Lee's going to take a baseball bat grip on my arm, right? And he's just going to pull me to begin with. Just stop pulling him. Really try and pull me, right? And I get moved, okay? And so when he, we do this with the kids for abduction, there are two main things that get taught here. So sometimes you can go completely square and push your hip in, and I just start leaning my weight in, right? And he now can't move me, right? The only thing I would say about doing this is I'm... I'm very strong against him here in this line. But if he starts trying to pull me at an angle, so he starts trying to change the angle, yeah, I start to it starts to unravel. So I need to get a base, and this is kind of a universal principle of jiu-jitsu for me. I want to get a base that also has some insurance if he starts moving around. Because, like Alex said in his session, it's all very well doing static things, and you start moving. Uh, particularly younger guys, you move around a lot and it then becomes harder to deal with because you're not just going to pull me in a straight line, right? So what I want to do is, is to form my pyramid. So I have my 12 o'clock foot provides me basically with my insurance on this plane and my 3 o'clock leg provides me with some insurance going this way. And then what I'm going to do with this, so I said I could, one, I could push my hip in and lean back, but what I'm going to do is work with the major torque, which is the neck, the neck and the body twisting and then retracting my shoulder and pulling my arm in. And this is a more pragmatic version. So as Lee starts to pull me now, I'm just going to sink further and further and further into this, right? And I just want you to get this feeling that if you feel like you're being pulled, straighten up your head, turn your shoulders into it, and I'm doing exactly the same thing as I was just doing with it. Yeah? So this is just defending the pull for now. But I'm actually in not too bad a position if I'm connected to my shoulder on the sternum, which we're going to come on to. I'm not in too bad a position for pushing either. He's going, going to find it hard to push me here. Right? And this is going to be my, this is kind of like my base reference point when I roll now. Yeah? So just get a body, nice and easy, two for two. You're not trying to be too clever with this. You just, it's really about the person doing it. And you're just trying to get this nice 12 and 3. Turning your shoulder and keep your head up. I have a habit of dropping my head. Keep your head up because that determines your base as well. If my head starts going here, you can, you know, somebody can start trying to pull me here. So I want to be inside my silhouette, retracting my shoulder, thumb out, like Matt talked about yesterday on the back skate. Chin looking back, I don't need to look at him. Shoulder in the middle. And just feeling that twist. Yeah? Let's give it a go. 